Good morning, everyone. Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, I'm not at 100% right now. I just I got a lot going on with sinuses and uh, and I'm cold and grumpy, and I keep making mistakes. <laughs> and uh, the they're burning the mountain side over there still, so the smoke in the air is just really getting to me. But uh, by the end of this video that I'm filming right now, we'll be out of here. We are departing Taterland. I've got the trailer hooked up to the RV. Just kind of getting everything set up here because uh, we got some we got some last minute projects going on today before we hit the road. Yeah, thanks for being here with me, guys. I think by the end of this video, I will be feeling a lot better. We've uh, probably the latest I've ever decorated for Christmas. We got the reef up here with my battery operated lights that are hooked behind there. Trees in there, stockings are up. I'm ready for Christmas now that we're in November. And uh, also, uh, it's no shave November, so my beard's getting a little longer. I'm trimming the lip line up here and noticing a lot more white down here as I grow the beard than last time I did this. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. I'm just, uh, I, I got a lot going on. So today, today you're going to go with me and we are going to button up, hopefully, the last few things here at camp. Uh, the RV is winterized. I'm actually going to de-winterize it tomorrow morning. Uh, it's, it's just, it's been in the teens at night and uh, I didn't want to wreck any plumbing or anything. So I'm I am very very ready to just get south guys. So in this video we're going to we're going to take off south and at least get to warmer climate where the lows are like 50 instead of 16. But this is where Frida has been parked for what 5 weeks now and uh we're going to be making a change. In fact, I've got Griffin's propane supposed to be here at 2:30 p.m. to move the tank and uh I'll tell you what's going on with that. <laughs> I keep getting all these memories uh, from and the reminders from all of my YouTube videos from a year ago and to see that I was already in a much, much warmer area by now in all years past. This is the latest I've stayed in a cold area. I, I was waiting for the registration of the RV, which I have the sticker on the window now, but uh, now it's just a matter of getting things together and going. But looking back at these memories of me, uh, you know, enjoying Southern California and, and, and Central Florida down there and all that really, really makes me sad. So I'm gonna secure up Babe the Blue Box and show you what's going on in here. Speaking of securing things, I also want to thank my video sponsor. Thank you ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video and so many in the past, like the last time I was down in Florida, which I miss. I've been traveling the country, no, I've been traveling the globe lately. So you might ask, how am I keeping all of my personal information safe online, making reservations with my debit card for other countries in the future? There's some trust involved there, right? Yeah, I trust all of my online security to ExpressVPN for over three years now, actually. Really easy, right from my mobile phone. I'll just open up my ExpressVPN app here and we'll connect to, let's scroll down to Seattle, Washington, say. It's connecting. We are connected just like that. USA, Seattle. You can connect to any of their online servers from 94 countries and there's never any slowdowns or buffering on ExpressVPN, which means all of your information is safe and will not ever be reused. For instance, without this protection, if I'm connecting to all sorts of public Wi-Fi, like at the airport or at the campground or coffee shops, anyone using that same Wi-Fi could potentially easily steal my information, not with ExpressVPN. Oh, and rest assured, ExpressVPN is the top rated VPN provider by CNET, The Verge, Mashable, and, and many others, number one. And find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by visiting the link in the video description right below this video or visiting expressvpn.com slash nomadic. And thanks again, ExpressVPN, for sponsoring this video. Again, Starlink is staying here. I will be bringing Connect and Internet with me. You'll find a link below in the video description for high-speed mobile or off-grid internet. I have already changed my provider. I called them up, said, all right, we're gonna switch from T-Mobile back to AT&T for the road because I, I like AT&T on the road more here. Uh, T-Mobile works better, but 
One of the big problems I've been having, guys, has been going on inside this shed, and I need to tell you a little mistake I made and why this is happening. So inside Bave the Blue Box, we've got the solar system. Well, we've also got my internet. We've got my Simply Safe security system. We've got my Night Owl security system with the cameras so that I can monitor everything from the road via my phone and get push notifications if something happens. Of course, Danny now lives here on the property and works nearby, so he's my He's my security guy here on the property and can actually, I'm gonna leave him a set of keys so that he can go into the sheds and check on things and make changes. But we have a, a heating, well actually a freezing problem in here. Uh, when I did the DIY solar project on trailer, Swift my Harley trailer there a couple videos ago, that battery that I showed you guys, that was a, uh, that battery had a BMS in it that would not allow it to be charged when the internal battery is under 32 degrees. And that's to protect lithium batteries. You can discharge them at any temperature, but charging them, um, you can't. And, and well, with that battery, it's like, a, it's like a safety feature, right? Unfortunately, with those four Redodo batteries right there, they have a BMS, they have high temperature shut off and a few other things, but they, they do not have any protection from cold, which means, if they're running my inverter and everything's going on at night and it freezes in here, which of course it has several days, it's been in the teens and it gets well down into the low twenties in this non-insulated shed. Um, well, as soon as the sun comes out and tries to put solar into those batteries, you can damage those batteries instantly. The, the cells cannot handle being charged at freezing conditions. So at night, what I've had to do every night that it's been freezing out here is come over here to my solar conjunction box, turn off the solar panels, and then once I know in the morning that it's not freezing inside, I can pop that breaker back on and start things up. Well, I've also tried a couple different things because, I don't know, I, I like to try new things, but I fail. So there's, there's two things I wanna say that won't work in case you're gonna try these your, your, yourself. First of all, this is the only thing that does work. I have my Mr. Heater 20,000 BTU in here. And it's really cool because the thermostat control, if, if you set it below one, it goes under 70 degrees. So I've actually got it set up for uh, 55 degrees and it just cycles on and off perfectly. But what I originally thought and why you see all the insulation around the batteries is that I could put heat pads, you know, like those, um, RB tank pads that stick to the bottom of the tanks and then they kick on with a thermostat when it gets cold so that your tanks don't freeze. I thought, yeah, I'm gonna put them underneath there. I ordered them. Well, they haven't even arrived yet, actually, but I got several people telling me on Patreon and in the Am Amazon reviews, they showed the problem. And that is, it started burning up the bottom of the floor and the batteries. In one case, somebody said that it got up to 240 degrees under the battery and melted the plastic casing of the batteries. Because the company that replied said, yeah, those, this, this is a heat pad. This is actually a 12 volt heat pad. These need open ambient air on the bottom. You take off this peel, you stick it to the bottom of the tank, and then it needs airflow underneath to make the thermostat work right. If you just put this on the ground, and then put batteries on top of it, that's when the thermostat doesn't work. It's not intended for that purpose, right? I, I probably should have known that. And by the way, I almost made a big mistake because I first bought two of these, which I'm still gonna use. I'm gonna use these on my RV later, but I was gonna put two of these under there. These are 12 volt heating pads, Eric. That's a 48 volt system. We would have had a big problem had I tried to wire up two of these to my 48 volt system. My second idea was to build an enclosure and put a heat lamp in here so that we're not heating the whole shed. We're just putting direct heat right there. And as you can see, we're already missing some styrofoam right here that melted, guys. It has been a battle for me here. Uh, but what's going on now? I've got my Simply Safe and Night Owl cameras all around the property. Well, I have one indoor camera right here, which is really cool. I'll actually show you a picture. Well, see this little thermometer right here? That's in the frame. Now this camera shoots directly at the batteries, the heater, and the front door right there with the thermometer in the corner of the shot. I'll show you a picture right now what I was looking at last night while I kind of fine-tuned the thermostat and uh, I just I just watched it and it stayed right around 53, 54 degrees on here perfectly. It's not really economical because again, this shed is not insulated at all. But as soon as 9 a.m. rolls, that kicks off and as you can see, it's already 68 degrees inside naturally. That's with the door open right now. It would be even warmer than, oh, I moved it. Now I gotta get it in the shot right. 
Anyway, I'll fix that. The, so the only thing that's gonna work here is to have heat, a little bit of heat on a thermostat. So, hence Griffin's propane. They're scheduled for 2.30 this afternoon. They're, I've moved my RV so they can drive up, grab the tank, which is already disconnected from the RV, move it closer to bathe the blue box. They're going to make me new copper propane lines, put them into the building, and uh, for right now, I mean, there's still 70 gallons of propane in here that I prepaid for. So I, I'm assuming that at some point, even with that set at, at 50, 55, they're gonna have to refill this. And Danny will have to come out here and he'll have to check it for me like month to month and see where it's at. Actually, we're at 65 gallons now out of 120. Well, 100, they, they can fit 100 in there. And then, uh, yeah, so with having a friend here on site and me monitoring everything, because the, the real problem is if you damage those batteries because they were charged when they were frozen, I lose everything. I do. I lose power. I lose security. I lose all of my cameras to monitor things. However, Simply Safe is, you can adjust how much help you want from Simply Safe, but they do push notifications if the master alarm goes off here for any reason, even a power outage. If you do not respond with your safe word on Simply Safe, dispatch from the county, from Apache County, will be out here to investigate a break in at my property. And they'll get here faster than Danny can even get here from where he works. So, even if I lose everything, there's a police officer that will come out to the property, park right here, walk around and investigate things as they continue to try to reach me. Hopefully I have service with text messages. After text messages, they'll also try to call me. And I have listed Danny also as another member. So if they can't reach me, they will try to call Danny. He may be at work or he may be asleep in here and to say something at night. But, you know, I, this, once we get heat going on in here, I can, I can feel better. Right now, I don't feel better. I don't, I don't feel good. It's just, it's been a lot of trial and error and a lot of mistakes by me. And, and again, I'm, I'm sorry for this video. It's kind of a weird video, but it's just kind of a day in the life of my mistakes and what you really need to do. I know a lot of people have off-grid summer properties like this, and then it gets really, really cold and we all go south. Well, there's things to think about, you know? Freezing pipes, uh, keeping power out here going, uh, most all of my security cameras over there are hardwired. I've also got some here that are recharged by solar panels and then they connect Bluetooth back to the system there. So I've got all, I've got all points covered here at least. So I shouldn't stress. But in the meantime, before Griffin's propane comes, I am gonna work on Trailer Swift because I have changed my mind several times on just simple things like what I'm gonna bring, where everything is gonna be positioned in here, I'm bringing a little grill, bringing, uh, bringing uh, all of my Guitar Hero stuff in that bin, along with the remotes and stuff for all five of my RC trucks there. Gotta find spots for my tools. Out of all my stuff in my uh, big uh, toolbox rack, I'm only bringing what fits in that little right there for the road. I'm bringing some tables, bringing some extra portable solar panels, Bring in some water with me, and the water's great because once I get things loaded, I can position those where I want, put some wood chips to help the balance of this so we don't have too much tongue weight on the trailer. But as you know, once the Harley sits in here, it's, a, it's already a lot of rear weight down here because most of the motorcycle is behind the rear axle, which they purposely moved farther back on the trailer knowing we were gonna put a motorcycle in this trailer. So yeah, I will be working in here. Battery is at 14.2. 14.2 volts, and that one does have BMS control. Uh, so if it did freeze, it would not charge in the morning when, when solar starts to hit these panels. It'll wait until the battery temperature gets back up. So that's good. I'm gonna get some more coffee though. I got, <clears throat> I got a little sore throat. I got a headache, like almost migraines behind my eyeballs. And I'm having a hard time breathing. You can't even see the smoke, but it is very, very smoky. It smells like a house fire constantly out here. It's the mountains up there. Let me get some coffee. And I'm oh. testing out this system because if I'm parked somewhere down south for a while, I will just refill these. Well, I'm not putting a propane tank on the back of my Harley with me, but I could pay somebody else to do it when they go to town, right? And give them a few bucks for it. Yeah, taking a break from working in Trailer Swift. I got the uh, leg lamp there. I've got the Christmas tree. Wait, let me turn it on. Christmas, oh, I can't see the lights. I got the twinkly lights on there, the really bright ones. Maybe I'll show it to you later tonight once it gets dark. Anyway, I'm freezing, guys. And so I, I took off the jacket because I, I saw that I had goosebumps and then I, it's 79 degrees inside the RV and I got goosebumps. 
So, I just took my temperature, and I do have a fever. I have a fever right now, which means I am sick. It's not anything to do with the smoke, I'm sick again. So, what is this change moving south? Well, I can't see anybody until my fever goes away. I'm still cold, but then again, I also thought about the fact that you can get a fever from a new tattoo. And so, I need to share something with you. You guys know I got this in Vegas. Well, two days ago, I was thinking that my other arm was a little blank. So I went to Sholo here at Donna Light Tattoo and got another tattoo. Actually, another Harley tattoo. Uh, and uh, it's only two days old right now. Uh, I just cleaned it and it's not even peeling or anything like that. It's brand, brand new. And uh, I've gotten a fever before from uh, tattoos because, you know, you're sitting there for this was three hours of just nonstop stabbing your arm. And now it's healing. Uh, I'll, I'll keep an eye on how the rest of me feels. Maybe it's a combination of the smoke with my head, but then also the tattoo and the fever from the tattoo. So, I'm just keeping an eye on it. I'm going to put my jacket back on and keep working and monitoring that. But um, as long as I have a fever, I, I can't go see anybody south. So, I'm going to have to do some alone camping. But at, at least I want to get to warmer temperatures. I don't want to get sick again. I hope this is just related to the tattoo. All right, we got Griffin's Propane back on site. They're gonna pick up the tank and move it for me today. <laughs> it's a handy little machine they got here. I think they'll put it on the bed and then drive the truck around. We're gonna put it on, instead of putting it on the back side, we're gonna put it on the front side. And I'd say this is the last time we're gonna move it, but like Kevin, I know better. Things can always change. <laughs> yeah, this propane tank has had quite the journey here on the property. It's good company though. They've helped me out a lot. All right, while they're working on the propane thing over there, I'm, I told them I'm not feeling well, so I don't want to get close to them, but they had any questions, they can come holler at me in here. I've been busting my butt on Trailer Swift, guys. And this is gonna be unlike any other trip I've taken, especially this summer. I have got everything I actually want is going with me. And this is something you can't do when you bring the car. I'm bringing a barbecue grill, guys. Here's the grand tour. All right, so Black Betty comes in here and parks. <laughs> I got my projector speaker, I got my toolbox, I got a power station. This is my method for keeping everything in place. There's little pieces of two by four scrolled into the bottom so that nothing can slide or shake. Uh, move over the other side. This is the big change. Now, uh, these water tanks are full right now. Uh, they might, uh, it just depends on the weight balance. I've got to get the right balance of the trailer. And since it's so different now, I may travel with these empty and just fill them up when I get somewhere for a long stay. Right now they're, they're full and that's 80 pounds of water right there. Look at this guys. <laughs> Hopefully Black Betty can still park and not hit this, but I constructed a little device where I can bring three folding tables. This is actually my picnic table that has benches built in. Uh, 400 watts of solar there, another 100 watts there, and I built this mechanism here to hold it in place, as well as some more brackets over here to keep them from sliding forward. So they ain't going nowhere. They might rattle, but I don't care because I'm not in here driving. When, we, when I want to get these out, I have to pull these out, and then they slide right out the back. So, so I'm just trying to keep from stabbing too many holes in the floor here. Up front, like I said, all my uh, RC truck batteries and controllers and everything are in there, plus Guitar Hero stuff. Bring in the grill, propane grill. I've got two propane tanks, one for the grill, one for possibly my portable uh, fireplace here, or one for the RV. Tools, bungeed, again, using these, bungee in those to there, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Really, uh, the last step is just to get Black Betty in here, cinch down and make sure that the highway bar clears this. It doesn't have to clear it by much, but it's gotta clear it. And then I'll probably hop off on this side and either go out or have to step like this in the front so that I can secure. So yeah, they're still working over there. Let me uh, bring Black Betty in. Lots of room. Lots and lots and lots of room. 
Yeah, well, I gotta lean a little bit, but that's still manageable. All right, let's get her cinched down here. Okay, the uh, propane guys are done. I just paid my invoice. Uh, it was $179, $179 to do the work today, to move the tank and put new fittings and hardwire me in the shed. But that's just the price of, well, for me, being able to travel this winter and uh, know that everything's gonna be okay without me. <laughs> so, new tank right here. I'm okay with that. Um, they did, you know, they had to do it per specs. Uh, so we got a copper line going in here. Looks nice. And then a brass or steel tubing to go in there. So that looks all fancy. Uh, then on the inside, they just made me a custom hose. It's a little thicker, but pops out right there. It's got the valve right there for specs. Uh, so I don't need another one on the back of here. So now I just need to position this again, wherever it was. Let's see here. And the pilot is already going. So yeah, if we crank this up, there we go. We got flameage, guys. We're gonna be good. Batteries, are you happy that I'm taking care of you? Yeah, Eric, we're really happy. Okay. Technically speaking, I could lock this up right now, uh, turn the alarm on, and hit the road. I could. Uh, I'm still gonna wait till tomorrow morning though, okay? So, tater tot. I'm gonna move the car back to its spot over there so I can trickle charge. Just wanted to get it out of the way. See you in uh, a few months, okay? Yeah. Actually, I'm okay with staying one more night because this just gives me one more way to monitor everything going on with the propane tank and everything and just make sure that we're still okay and that the fuel's regulated, but, I, but I'm sure it is. You know, I'm sure everything's fine. Uh, we're just getting really, really close now. Hey, I'm feeling better, guys. I checked my temperature after dinner and I'm at 97.7 degrees. So it's actually gone underneath the normal now. So that's good that my fever's gone. Um, <clears throat> my throat's still a little sore and I still kind of have a headache. So I'll just be keeping an eye on my health and stuff. But uh, I know it's gonna be really nice to get down tomorrow, uh, back down to 2000 feet and, uh, and not freeze. So this is the last night that I really got to worry about it. Like I said, Christmas decorations. Well, you saw this one in the daytime. It, it's, I definitely upgraded my uh, front grill wreath game. These are very, very bright decorations. And uh, these little battery operated lights, super easy. Everything's just zip tied to the grill behind it. And then the lights are zip tied and twisted around it as well. The battery packs in here. This will run for six hours and then shut off for 18 hours and then continue to come on at the same time every night till the batteries are dead. Got the Christmas tree up in there. I'll show you that in a minute. But I'm also pretty glad that everything I wanted to bring fit. Well, everything but one. I have one tote. And I already have four of those totes in the cab over area up here. So I need to consolidate to turn five into four. But we can do it. We can do it, Opie. Gonna have to do it. Then uh, Black Betty sitting pretty in here. All greened out. Heck yeah. I'm actually really proud of myself for designing this little case to hold all these tables and stuff. That that worked out really well. Maybe a little bit of luck there. Grill will be nice, cooking burgers and f grilling some chicken. And uh, yeah, well, I'm going to close the main door of the RV, kick on the heater, lock all this up. The bike is secure. It ain't going nowhere. And then uh, tomorrow morning as part of this video. Well, well, we'll hit the road, guys. We will hit the road. <clears throat> I'm excited. I'm excited about the road. I will miss Arizona. That is to say, I'll miss parts of it, you know? It'll make it all the more appreciative when I get back in the spring, you know? And I can start back to projects all after all the snow's melted. <laughs> but, all right, going inside with the kitties. Good vibes here in the RV. Still gotta clean up some kitchen area, do some last minute dishes. Got the leg lamp looking good there. This is that one that they sell uh, in Ohio, but uh, what it would look like without my modification is that. It's just one tiny little bulb in the center and it doesn't even light the whole leg up. So I got a dowel that has LEDs all the way around the dowel. And then I put the dowel in there and then I created another outlet up here on top so that <laughs> the whole leg lights up just like the movie. And I like that. Um, as far as how I'm keeping everything mounted here in the RV, 
because this ain't going anywhere, but I have it screwed to this plate as well as, I know it looks weird, but a bungee. A bungee that comes up here and holds it to the wall in case we go over some crazy bumps on the road. That ain't going anywhere. It's worked in, in years past. And as far as the Christmas tree, well, same thing. Same thing I do every year, even though I'm doing everything wrong. I duct taped all three legs to the floor, cleaned the floor, duct taped all three of them. Keep that covered so the kitties don't get in there. And then up here, we got one bungee going from the tree over here to pull it tight this way so it can't rock back. I mean, yes, it's gonna shake on bumpy roads, but these ornaments that I've been collecting for years, all the branches are twisted up so they, they, you know, they can't come off and break. And I mean, I have been collecting ornaments for a long, long time. There's my newest Wally that I got uh, in Disneyland. Nash Lampoon's Christmas. There's a Yoda down there. Of course, another leg lamp there. The, the old uh, RV from A Christmas Story. Nintendo controller. Tomater, Back to the Future. Defender the Arcade. We got Ralphie up here. I'm not, I, you know, there's a lot, they're all over the tree. I'm not gonna be able to find all of my ornaments. But uh, these are those twinkly lights that I love so much. If you guys aren't hip, it's, it's app controlled LED Christmas lights and they are ridiculously cool. So I can go in here and I can look for some patterns. Maybe I want this color. It gives me a little sample of what it might look like. I can go back, scroll through here. Maybe I want bright orange for Halloween. Yeah, I did this color for Halloween before I put the ornaments on. You guys probably saw. Evil strobe. Oh my gosh, that is just painful. Take that one off. Sherbert. Just a lot of different colors of greens and turquoises. So uh, yeah, uh, I, I like my twinkly lights. And uh, I've got a little dish scapes going right now with a Christmas fireplace. Crackling fireplace. A candle in the background with some pine scent, so... I'm ready. Christmas makes me smile. Christmas makes me happy. You get November and December all to Christmas, which is great. Also, one of those whole bins up there in the corner is all Christmas lights. My candy canes, my Christmas LEDs, my projector that does all the Christmas colors for once we get settled. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, I'm gonna hang out with the kitties. We'll tap in the morning and get the heck out of here. Yeah. Okay, last cold morning for a little while. Good morning, everyone. Ooh, I, uh, here at the property, I usually wake up before the sun comes up, like right, just naturally. And I don't even have chickens here going, burr, 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 burr. but uh, if you look, you could probably see the smoke in the air. It, it would be pretty if that were fog off in the distance, but that's not fog. That's the smoke fire over there in the mountain. And uh, they're saying it's gonna get worse, so we picked a good day to depart. Um, like I said, I'm shooting for 1,500 to 2,000 feet lower elevation. And uh, I'll be back to Taterland next year. Okay? Be well, but I'll keep eyes on you on all my cameras for my phone. Tater tot, we'll see you later. Let's get out of here, guys. All right, well, none of us have seen this view for a while, right? We'll be able to see how the tree responds going down the road. I've also got both of my rear cameras so I can actually see the solar panels for their first trip on top of Trailer Swift, as well as switch it to the back camera. And we can go dual screen here, although I will mention my very first stop here is gonna be Maverick to clean the windshield. It's bad, it's really, really bad. And also we need to stop and fill up the onboard propane tank of Frida here. We're moving guys. Oh, this is good. This is a really good feeling. Frida, we're gonna go find some warmer, some warmer areas, okay? And guys, I figured out, I think I figured out what the problem is. I think it's a sinus infection. I'm hacking up yellow phlegm and uh, I'm fighting something. I'm fighting a sinus infection right now, which kind of makes sense. I can feel it in my ears and stuff. But anyways, we're off. Goodbye, Taterland. Y'all be well. I will see you in a couple days on down the road. Bye, guys.